Today's topic, reinventing the wheel, again. Welcome to another episode of Table Scraps, in which we present a topic related to tabletop gaming and then have a brief conversation about it with the live audience. Let's not waste any more time listening to this weird intro music. Let's get right into today's discussion. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of our month-long experimental daily web series, Table Scraps, in which we will be discussing a topic about the tabletop gaming industry and hobby, along with the live streaming YouTube chat. So thank you very much for joining us. And today's topic comes from a viewer named Zach, who asks us the following. He wants to talk about reinventing the wheel saying, there are many common game components that have fallen out of good graces with the community. Paper money, ugh, spinners, ugh, score pads, ugh, etc. Are there any modern games that have actually incorporated these commonly cursed components correctly? Alliteration for Chaz. Wow, well thank you, Zachary, I appreciate that. And the fact that you managed to squeeze in a little bit of alliteration there. Alliteration is always appreciated. Well, before I can answer that question, I think we first need to distinguish the difference between some of these components. Because in your list, uh, as thorough as it was, I did notice what I thought were two different types of components that were listed there. Uh, you listed like paper money and score pads. While probably not the most wonderful component, I do see those as being still a necessity in certain games. You're going to need paper money for tracking money in, in certain games, and you're going to need score pads for recording scores. Now, you also mentioned, though, some components which are, I think, obsolete and easily replaceable, such as the dreaded spinner. Which, fun trivia fact, the dreaded spinner is my personal least favorite, most hated board game component. I can't stands me a spinner. Spinners, though, fortunately, are usually able to replace with a die, even like randomly pulling stuff out of a bag, and all sorts of things. Uh, or any sort of random number generator can be used to replace the dreaded spinner. So I think there you have two different categories of obsolete components. You have the ones that may be obsolete, but are still technically a necessity for performing some sort of board game mechanisms. And then you have the ones that are completely obsolete and have been replaced by bigger and better things. So therefore, I think it's not going to be possible to always replace um, every single obsolete component with their more modern counterpart. Uh, but that is just one fellow's opinion. Let's turn over to the YouTube chat to find out the opinion of other peoples of YouTubeness who are joining us to see what they have to say on the topic as well. Let's scoot on over here to our first comment by Michael, who says, Lots of games still use these items, some to better effect. Millennium Blades for paper money, Scythe for spinners with its wheel dials, and Unfair for score pads. Oh, Michael, you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, Millennium Blades was actually the one game on my shortlist for an improvement made to paper money. Uh, but I, I figured someone else was going to mention it in the comments real quick, and boom! Oof! There you go, right there. That's really um, interesting, though, about Scythe for the spinners. I had not actually thought of Scythe as being um, a modern adaptation of the dreaded spinner. But I can see that. That's a really, really good way of putting it because you can dial in, um, you can dial in your attack uh, stats and, and stuff like that. So I will concede to you that there may actually be a modern upgrade for the dreaded spinner, which I had not thought of before. So you've opened my mind, Michael. Cool. Stefan says, score pads are everywhere in Euro games. They need to get with the times and app it up. Yes, I was going to mention in my own notes that uh, apps could be replacing score pads, but are apps and smartphones ubiquitous enough yet that they actually really could be a replacement? Does everybody have access to those enough that you could 
you could actually produce a game without a paper score pad and still be okay with just having an app that does the scoring. Are there going to be enough people? I don't think that we as a board game industry are at the point like Apple was with its iMacs yet, where they came out with them and they were the first computers that had no floppy drive at all in the default build. So it, it, I don't think that we can make that leap yet in technology. I think we still need the analog paper score pads until smartphones are as common as, you know, wallets. And we may be getting there. But personally, I don't think we're there yet. Where I do think we are is at the next comment, which is by Trevin, who says, spinners were used instead of dice, as dice used to have a negative connotation, especially with the religious. The, the, the stigma has largely left, meaning dice can return. I hadn't thought of that, but I can totally see that. Uh, the stigma associated with dice and uh, gambling games and stuff like that. That would also kind of make sense why many games geared towards small children, like Shoots and Ladders and uh, Hi-Ho Cheerio, use spinners instead of dice because of that potential connotation. If, if you have any follow-up like documentation about that, um, make a link to it in, in the comments below, because I'd be interested in researching how much of an impact that type of thing has had on the industry. Kind of reminds me of the 40s and 50s with the uh, Comics Code Authority that changed you know, the content of comics. Could there have been events that have had an impact that have changed the development of board games? Hmm. Our next comment comes from Zachary, who says the game Spectre Ops did a great job using pen and pad. Not only did it track damage and rounds, but it also handled the secret movement brilliantly. Ho ho ho! Yes, but there's a twist! The story of Spectre Ops components is not done yet. Because while Spectre Ops did do a great job with pen and paper, there is a fantastic Spectre Ops companion app that is in development by Emerson uh, Matsuchi, who the, the, the designer of Spectre Ops, which is supposed to completely replace the need for the pen and paper. So while Spectre Ops may be a game where the pen and paper implementation was done well enough that it justified its place, it is possible that they are working on a technological advancement that will make it obsolete in app form. So we may have, whoop, a little flip there uh, of the story, a little bit of a twist on the tale. However, we'll see after the app comes out just how much of an impact it has on how people play the game. Okay, I'll struggle horribly through uh, the next comment, which comes from Axentral, who says, the paper money in Firefly the game are really, really good, and I would not want to exchange them for anything else. They just fit the theme of the game so well. Oh, well, that is very interesting. Um, so Firefly the game, the paper money fits there. Uh, Millennium Blades, which was mentioned already, is like the other game I know of where people say, hey, the paper money fits and, and kind of is okay with this game. Uh, usually, I've seen people, uh, even with Firefly, which is kind of, you know, a sci-fi game, uh, wanting to replace the paper money with, you know, metal uh, credit looking coins and stuff like that. But it sounds like for you, uh, the paper money is still even better, better than that alternative. It makes me curious what other Firefly players, though, are using. Are, are you guys all using the paper money? Or is there kind of a common money upgrade that a lot of Firefly players are using? Let me know in the comments below. Gazentia mentions, the only game with a spinner, rather than dials, that I've liked the implementation of is for life with its plastic spinner. The production quality you need to get that component working is high. That is true. However, you do not share the same opinion as the host. The dreaded spinner in the game of life is one of the most dreaded, dreaded spinners that I have encountered in my own gaming life. And I'll tell you why. If you spin that thing too fast, it turns into a little like hover copter and goes and comes right off the board and scoots across and hits your little car and your pink and blue meeples come out of the car and spread across the board. And then it hits your uh, your your sister's money pile and it goes all over the place and then she punches you in the arm and then you got to put it back. That's not even the only reason why. The other reason why is after a small amount of very cautious use, that spinner starts to just not spin anymore. And you got to go to the kitchen cupboard and get like olive oil or something and pour olive oil on the little stick that it sits on and then spin it. And it spins really well for a while. Whizz! 
is, but even the olive oil starts to wear off and then you're stuck to it going like that and then just going and going across the table, hitting your sister's money again and then pow, another punch in the arm. It's the facts. I'm just relating the facts to you, Gazentia. Just relating the facts as I see them. The next comment comes from Kabuki Kid, who says, personally, I like paper money and power grid. The game wants you to have hidden money, so paper can work really well. I even made little wallets for each player to hide their paper money in. Okay, that is cool. Having little wallets for power grid to, I'm, I'm gonna go down to the store and find really cheap, uh, cheap vinyl Velcro wallets in different colors because that is the most fantastic component upgrade I have heard of in a while. Uh, little, little mon I'm, I'm finding them. That is an excellent idea, Kabuki. Thank you so much. I'm serious. That is a really cool idea. I like that. Let's wrap up here with the comment by uh, Tom, who says, spinners are harder to swallow if you're a kid as compared to dice. That may actually be a valid point because I know that sometimes when a publisher of a game has to put the age range on a game, it's not based on the complexity of the rule set, but actually based on the components that are included in the game. So if the smaller the components, the higher the age range that they have to put on the box of the game, and also more vetting and testing it has to go through in certain um, distributor channels and stuff like that. So actually, Tom, that is a valid point. That's harder, much harder to choke down a big plastic spinner unless you have an older sister, then sometimes it can be a way to make it happen can be found. Unfortunately, I now have to go suppress some childhood memories, so we're out of time, but I want to thank everyone who has joined us for this episode of Table Scraps, and if you want to continue the conversation, please do so either in the comments below or over on our Facebook and Twitter pages where we can continue the conversations about this and the other topics that we've discussed. And before we go, I want to thank everyone who has been supporting Pair of Dice Paradise on our Pod Pledge fundraiser page. The support of viewers like you is what's making episodes like this possible to keep doing. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler, who, along with the YouTube live streaming chat, have been serving up some table scraps. Talk to you again soon. I may, I may have revealed too much uh, historical information as to why I don't like the dreaded spinner in life. I'll, I'll give that to you, that, I'm, that it's oh, too many words are trying to come out of my mouth at once. We'll see, though, after the pa pan, ah, what other people who are Firefly, Firefly, the game Spectre Ops did a great j jabe, j jorb. Ah, I'm becoming Coach Z. The game Spectre Orps, Okay, I did that one on purpose.